What up, brothers? Today we're gonna do some R and R, and I ain't talking about the rest and relaxation type. So remove and replace. Uh, 05 WRX wagon. We're gonna replace the radiator because it is faulty, and we're gonna be replacing it with said Mishimoto radiator. You can find this on Amazon. Uh, I'll put a link in the description so you guys can check it out. It's a pretty sweet piece. All aluminum. She's gonna stay nice and cold now. And this comes with all the factory bracketry in the spots where they're supposed to be. It is for direct fit to this car, so there's no fabrication. So we're gonna show you how it's done. First, take off the cap. So you let sufficient flow of the coolant out of the radiator. Then we're gonna get under it, drain everything out. All right, so it's pretty simple. From the bottom, we got three things we gotta do. First, the drain for the radiator is right here on the passenger side. You just unscrew that on the right, and it drains the entire radiator and whatever out of the engine as well. Then this is a manual WRX, so these cooler, these cooler lines will not be part of it. But if you had an automatic, you'd have to take these cooler lines off. We don't have to do that. Automatic, I'll be watching this channel. Yeah, if you got it, yeah, that's a good idea. Yep. And then <laughs> the fan plugs on both sides. There's one on each side. We'll plug the fans, and then take the bottom hose off, and then we'll uh, show you the rest from up top. Oh, dude, it's a streamer. The drain's a good way to keep it clean, but if you're trying to do it quickly, just drop the lower hose and let it come out. Uh, generally, the hose clamps are 5 16 to get them off. Look at the accuracy. Sometimes you need a little assistance with the plug. A little screwdriver or pry tool to be able to push the pin in and then pull it apart. So now you just got a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts along the top here that's holding on the fans and holding on this uh, coolant hose that goes to the overflow bottle and the top of the neck on the radiator. Easiest way is to pull the fans out first. You can do it either way. You can take it with the fans off or on the radiator. You're gonna have to fight a little bit more with them on. Now typically with the overflow bottle, there's a little tab here that you push in and then this pops out like this. But uh, that broke on this one so she just had a zip tied on here. But uh, pretty simple, once you do that, pull the hose out. And then the bottle just comes out. Has a little stem on the bottom that sits in that hole down there. Can't forget the other line on the other side of the radiator as well. Just sling up your top hose and get it out of your way. And don't forget about the 12 millimeters that actually holds the rat on. On both sides. So see, even with the fans on it, you still got a good amount of room. You gotta pull all this out, just move this startle cable. And she'll come right out. So since we, the radiator is just a little bit bigger, the Mishimoto one, we're gonna take this top hose off just cause to make it a little easier going back down into it. Yeah, just dump the excess down in your catch can. And it's out. And then a couple more tens on the fans here and they just sit in the bottom here so there's no attachment or no bolts or fasteners on the bottom. They're just held on by the top. Ooh, look at that. Oh, wow, dude. Dude, now we gotta cut the grill open so you can see the M on there. My goodness. Now the rubber feet for the radiator should stay in there, but if they do, just make sure that they're back in there before you put the new radiator down in there. And we'll be good to go. And something you may experience, and generally always is the case, unless you're buying some real high dollar stuff, is fitment issues with custom stuff. Just because it's not always exactly correct, so sometimes it takes a little bit of maneuvering to get things in the right spot. Dude, it came with a, a window sticker. Dude. I think it's an air freshener. You got the honey on the Scooby right there. Ooh, and uh, it also came with hardware for the fans because there are different threads on all the bosses here. 
so you got to use the hardware that comes with it. Leave the uh, when you're putting the fans on, you got to leave this one exposed because that's going to accept the coolant hose, the coolant line going back on. So if you put that on there, you're just going to remove it later anyway. But the other fan, you can put both of them on because they don't house it. There are separate ones here for the coolant hose or the coolant line on on this side. So each one of them comes with a washer and a locker. Make sure you use both because you don't want nothing coming off or loose. And this is what it should look like when you have fastened the fans on before installation of the radiator. And if you notice, this one does not come with a cooler for your transmission, so you do need to specify whether you have an automatic or manual when getting your radiator. Because if you have an automatic, you will not have your cooler on this one. Another thing to make sure is the plugs, especially this one, make sure it's tight because they do kind of just throw it on there from assembly. And make sure that the stem on here is also tight because none of these may not be tight coming from the factory and if you don't uh, test that stuff, you may have a leak later. So just double check your stuff. Let me hold that for you. Somewhere in there. Well, if you measure it off the center of our right right that's in there. Cool. They don't give you the nice, I should put a pad in here. They should give you a pad in there. Well, usually they give we you, get, you get the metal one that goes on top and holds it out on the part. True. So we'll just put a piece of. We don't got the aftermarket. Ratted radiator to hold down. So we'll just use some padding that came sure with the. Cool. Well, that should hold it away. Oh, well. Yeah. That pulls it all the way into it. So yeah. what? Yeah, so as you were seeing with Jake, what he was doing here, when the tie down, the hold down is on here, it's actually holding, it's actually up against the, the uh, rad support here. So we're gonna put a little piece of rubber in between here just so that it doesn't bang up against it, cause any damage to the radiator. So what we're gonna do instead of a uh, piece of rubber we were talking about, we're gonna use this just 3M double-sided tape. We're just gonna peel the one side off and put it on the radiator itself so then when it runs on here, it's not getting chewed up. steering back if you moved it I don't think I showed that but uh, in order to get a little bit more room for you you got this little tab here that you pull back and then this bottle just pops out always something to make your life easier always make your hose clamps in an easy get to spot when you're going back on if you got to flip them around do so or if you want to rotate them around to a certain put way make that happen so that it makes it way easier to go on and if you got to take it back off it says because if you saw the way it was on the one on the bottom it was facing up towards the top and it was kind of a hard uh, hose clamp to get to so we'll switch that around so we can it's an easier get to on the top on the bottom later so I uh, forgot to film it just uh, always make sure that your rad line your uh, coolant hose and line that's coming from this reservoir, make sure it's underneath both the power steering line and the upper hose. Otherwise, it'll be a fight trying to wiggle it in there later. So just make sure you have that underneath before you put that on and so you have more space a little easier. You know, it's almost like they knew this was broken. They provided the zip tie for us just in case. We're gonna leave it like that. Sweet, dude. Flare. Yeah, just for a little extra flare. And if you didn't see me put it in, you know, button goes down, slides into this first over here, behind this tab, and then it clips into there. Everything's bolted in. The hoses now, we just gotta go up. Put the bottom hose, the uh, drain is tight, as you saw us. And we just gotta plug in the fans and call it a day. Fill it up and run it. And make sure you fill both reservoirs. This one, radiator, and this one to the proper line. We're gonna run it with the cap off up there because that's the highest point and to get purge all the air out of the system. So fill it from the radiator first because it's the lower point and then we'll fill over here and then we'll run the car with this one only open. And a little side note on the radiator, they give you this card. 
basically for the 2002 and 2003s, they don't have that overflow on the filler neck here where Jake's it's overflowing. Just standing on it. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so they tell you to remove that neck and then put that plug that comes with it wherever that was. So I'm gonna keep watching this overflow. It will expand as it gets hot, so I don't wanna fill it too high, but I also wanna keep it from getting any more air in it. So I'll just keep an eye on this as we go as it warms up the car. So we're starting to get up to operating temperature here. We're just about full, and it was maybe like half full, and now that it's gotten hot, it's almost all the way to the top. That's why I don't fill it all the way up. And so I'm gonna run it for a little bit longer, wait till the fans come on. And then what I'll do is drive it around for a little bit and check it later on to make sure that it's full because sometimes it'll purge out a little bit more air after driving it for a while. And that's pretty much all it is. But that's all we got for today, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the little how-to on putting a radiator in this thing. If you guys have got any questions, comments, let me know. Subscribe to the channel. We'll definitely have more stuff like this. And I will see you guys on the next one. Later.